and welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra. You may or may not know me. I say that a lot. Anyways, so if you don't know me, hi, welcome to Crafting Unedited and welcome to the chaos. <laughs> I am going to show you guys how to sublimate onto a wine tumbler today. Um, ignore the printer sound in the background. It is possessed of making its own noises. Don't know what it's doing. Anyway, so we are going to sublimate a wine tumbler. Now this wine tumbler is from Heat Transfer Warehouse. They did send me a bunch of goodies um, to show you guys how to use them and do things with them. What is on my sleeve? Oh, it's a feather. It's a feather, guys. It's definitely not a bug. Not a spider. Not what I thought it was. It's too early for this. <laughs> Moving on. So it is one of their shimmer wine tumblers. Don't know if you could see the shimmery on the camera with the crazy bright ring light. There you go. Now you can see it. It's like an iridescent -y color. Um, this is white. They have blue, green, pink. They have a bunch of different colors that are sublimation ready. Um, so a couple of things that you want to make sure that you have. First is a blank, of course. Second, sublimation ready blank. Second, you want to make sure that you have is a... Um, Sublimation transfer, and that's this guy. That's what I'm going to be putting onto the cup using uh, koala paper. You can see it on the back there. I was gonna say walla cut, but um, or walla sub, which is what I normally use, but I got sent a bunch of different papers, so <laughs> I don't know what's in my printer at any given moment lately. It's just whatever's closest to it goes right into it. Um, alrighty, and then you want some heat resistant tape. Ignore my hair, I don't know what's going on. Um, heat resistant tape, scissors to cut the tape, and your transfer, and a tumbler press. I am using, you can't see it, my Zenny 8 and 1 heat press for the tumbler press part of it. Um, <laughs> ring light. I have a love hate relationship with this tumbler press. Um, it's not a specific tumbler press. It's actually a mug press, but it works for tumblers and wine tumblers and pretty much everything else. You just got to do it in several steps. Um, and it smells weird, but outside of that, <laughs> it works. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, it's just kind of a hassle having to remove the big plate to put in the tumbler press. So it just depends on what you're looking for, but that is the one that I use. It's off of Amazon. It's a Zenny 8 and 1. I am looking to get a new one and it's just a budget thing. So <laughs> the more you guys love and support me, the closer I get to getting that new one. So love you. Anyway, so moving on. First thing you want to do, which I had already done, but I probably ruined it and I don't have any more rubbing alcohol, is clear off the cup. <clears throat> Make sure that there's no, oh, look at that. Fuzzies like that guy right there. You see him? You probably cannot see him because it's white. Ooh, there's a fuzzy of sorts. I think it's just from the bubble wrap, but that would have, yeah, see, that would have ended badly um, if I didn't get it off. So just take a quick look over where you're going to be pressing. Make sure that all the stuff is off. Make sure you remove the cap. If yours has a cap, this will melt. Don't want that. And you want to Turn your heat press on. Will this turn all the way? I don't know if you can see that, but mine is set to 385 and four, or sorry, 385 and 60 seconds. Some of the tumbler presses will tell you to do um, 400 for 60 seconds. My heat press I know runs pretty hot. Um, it's not accurate, and I've learned that by burning several <laughs> blanks. So. I use mine at about 15 degrees lower than what the blank uh, manufacturer says most of the time. So 385 for 60 seconds. If your um, print, hmm, if your press is true temperature, then you want to do 400 for 60 seconds. Okay. So I'm going to move you guys over to the table so that you can see what I'm doing rather than talking to the back of my head. So one second. Alrighty, so we have our tumbler, we have our decal, we have our tape, 
We have our scissors. Oh, one more thing that you need is that butcher paper or that blowout paper, butcher paper, parchment paper, whatever you want to call it. I use parchment paper from Costco. Looks like this. Comes in two gigantic rolls. I think it's like 12 bucks. Works perfectly. Never had any issues with it. So what I like to do is have my tape pre-cut and just set off to the side. That's a big old piece of tape. Don't really need something that big. Actually, I could just cut that in half. There you go. Some people will tell you to tape the crap out of your transfer. I will not tell you that ever. Um, just make sure that it's secure where you want it. So this tumbler, it is not straight. It is tapered and it's tapered in a very weird way. So you want to make sure that you get this transfer on the flattest part if you are using a press like this. It's going to contour to it, but not as well as it would if it was a non-tapered. So you wanna make sure that this transfer doesn't go over this part is what I'm saying. It'll taper to the top, which it'll create like a cone, but then the bottom will stick out and nothing that you put down here it's going to get any sort of transferring. Okay, make sure it's as straight as you can get it. I eyeball everything. I hate measuring because it never ends up working for me. It's just like a recipe. If I follow a recipe, it's all sorts of messed up. It does not taste right. It's not what it's supposed to be. If I wing it, kind of follow the recipe, it turns out a thousand times better than it would have if I followed the recipe. Never fails. So, this was a fail on my part. Some of the paint from my table got on this piece of tape. Don't trust it, so we're just gonna... <coughs> Bless me. <coughs> Sorry about that. The weather has been really weird right now. Going up and down and up and down. Snowmageddon last week, which was started by rain, makes my sinuses go a little wonky. There we are. New piece of tape. I like to make sure that my tape doesn't wrinkle over my transfer. Um, reason for that is if it does, it could create like an air pocket in your transfer and you could end up with ghosting. Now I'm gonna put two more pieces of tape on each side because of how the cup is tapered. <clears throat> and then that'll be it. Some people will tape the Jesus out of these things. Like they will literally go on each and every nook and cranny and make sure that the whole thing is taped. I don't ever do that. And my cups have always turned out pretty good. Can't say perfect, nothing's ever perfect. But we're just going to do a little bit on this side. And then before I tape the last side, I'm going to push down, making sure that it's nice and smooth and flat. And then tape that bad boy up. There you go. That's really all the tape that you need. Get it on there. Make sure it's nice and secure. There's no wrinkles in the tape. Make sure that your press is preheated. Mine is, it's 385, 60 seconds. And then put your paper, oh, one thing you wanna do is if you have a press that has an adjustable um, pressure thing, like manual thing, um, you wanna measure the cup before you preheat it. Um, I did do this with another tumbler, um, wine tumbler the other day, so mine's already measured but you want to make sure that it's right before you go putting it in there like turning it on and everything because once you tape this and you put any heat on it it's going to immediately start transferring um so you want to make sure that you measure the cup to the press before you do any sort of um preheating right so going to make sure i did not do a full wrap so I'm gonna make sure that this whole transfer is on the bottom of the cup. That way it's gonna get the best coverage from the heat. Wrap that bad boy up. 
slide it on into the press and then get it in there. I'm going to turn it a little bit to make sure that it's the whole image is covered. I think it is a little bit further just in case and then we close. That's too tight. There we go. And then we set the timer and this is the part where I tell you that you should subscribe to my channel, like, love, comment, all that good stuff for me. Um, the more you support me, the more I can do things like this. Um, and I could hopefully get a new heat press. Um, <laughs> I love this guy. Don't get me wrong. It's done me very good for the last four years, four years. Yes. It's a very long time for a heat press. Does it worry me that it's been around for four years? little bit um <clears throat> the part that worries me is that it's been around for four years I've used it for four years a lot and the fishy stinky smell from the press still gets me I don't understand it but it is what it is it's what I've got right now and that's what I'm using so <clears throat> it's a great heat press I love the shirt part of it um works really well well the flat surface whatever you want to call it platen um but the more you like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff, it helps support me um, so that I can keep doing this stuff for you guys, showing you how to do it so you don't F it up like I do every time. First time. Every first time. All right. And then we're going to... Oh, I didn't grab a... <laughs> That's the wrong thing. You guys saw that, right? I opened the wrong clamp. <clears throat> that was really tight on there. So I don't have a towel to grab this with. <laughs> I had a moment, guys. I don't have a towel to grab this with, so it's going to be super duper hot. And my table is plastic, so that's great. <laughs> that's so smooth. <clears throat> I did burn it. Balls, I think. Only a tad bit, but it's you can only tell because of the glitter. I'm going down. Oh, that's hot. I need a shirt or a towel or something to pick this up with. We're going to wing it, guys, because I don't have anything in here. Oh, wait. <laughs> Use a oopsie tank top here. <clears throat> You want to have a pot holder at least, or some sort of glove, something to hold it with, because it's going to be very hot. I'm going to let that cool off for a second, and I'm going to move you guys up. You don't need to see me unwrap it. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> okay, so when you get it off of the heat press, typically you want to do it pretty quickly and remove the image. But obviously I couldn't do that this time because I'm a dummy and didn't have my, I wasn't prepared with a pot holder or heat glove or whatever you want to call it. So carefully remove the tape without burning your fingers off. Usually I like to make sure that my, I peel it off in one quick swoop like so. Um, I did overcook it just a tad and that's because I couldn't, I opened the wrong pressure thing, which it, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> not a big deal, but oh my goodness, look how cute that is. Adulting makes me whine. It really does. I hate adulting. It's for losers. All right. And that, my friends, look at it. It's so pretty. I wonder if I, because you can't really see the shimmer. If I turn the ring light off, can you see it? Still can't see the shimmer, can you? Hmm. Oh, there we go. See the shimmer. Woohoo! And this is supposed to be like a whiny red color, not like a. There you go. There you now you can see the shimmer. Not like a bright red, so it's perfect coloring. And now I can touch it. It's not too hot. All right, and then you take your cap, put it on, keep your packaging. 
put it in the packaging, put it in the box, label it, send it off to its newfound bestie. Yay, it's mine. <laughs> Adulting makes me wine. Just kidding, it's not for me. Anyways, so that, my friends, is how you sublimate a wine tumbler. You wanna make sure that you measure the tumbler to your heat press before you turn it on. That is the key to making sure that you get that tapered um, stuff, tapered design um, perfectly because it does, it's not just flat like the non-tapered, um, tumblers you can see it does kind of go in just a smidge just enough that if you have just a regular like cricket mug press this isn't going to work in a mug press i don't care if you put it upside down it's not going to work in the mug press because the mug press doesn't contour to the outside of the cup like this guy does um you want a tumbler press and one that can kind of like shift um some have like three prongs that will contour to tapered and non-tapered, depending on how much of a taper there is. But you can see right here, it tapers downward and then it also tap tapers going up. So Cricut Mug Press is not going to work with this unless you literally just do the top and then you only put it into like about here. That's about as far as you're gonna get with these in a Cricut Mug Press. Um, the reason why I did the video was to show you how to measure, you just put it in, close it and then pull your dial out or your pressure settings, turn them down a little bit. Um, and then so that you can see how to put the image on there. So that my friends is all my tips and tricks for sublimating on a wine tumbler that is tapered um, from Heat Transfer Warehouse. I do love their products. As you can see, they sublimate very well. <laughs> all right. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that good fun stuff. I really do appreciate all the love and support from you guys. And that way I can get a new heat press eventually. <laughs> all right. Until next time. Happy crafting, my friends. Peace out.